Here's the video of our student doing the English broadcast. This is our EPT, Commercial English Broadcasting Team. You are listening to Kotone, Yuna, and Hinako. Here's another video of our students. What PM now? It's five minutes before going home. Did you enjoy school today? Please return the things you used to. Please take care. And see you tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> My great pleasure on behalf of JALT to introduce Noreen Gallardo and Michelle Fuentes. They'll be speaking on making your tournament. So please start. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending our presentation today, Making Your School a Language Rich Environment. We're so excited to share and exchange ideas with everyone today. We are part of the Milka City Super Global School Program or the SGS Team Teaching. It's a collaborative method of teaching where teacher skills are simultaneously utilized and maximized to develop students' macro skills as well as increase their engagement and motivation. Here, there are two ALTs working with the Japanese teacher to plan, create, design, and execute lessons, activities, and programs that are effective, interactive, and fun to further enhance and improve English language acquisition and learning experiences of students. That's right. In today's presentation, we'll show you how to set up and manage five school-tested activities designed to make language use not only in an academic context, but also in the world at large. We will also share how these activities created an increase in participation, engagement, and motivation of our students. So let's begin with classroom and school environment. In terms of student engagement, the way we set up and decorate our schools and classroom is very important. All teachers have good intentions when decorating, but sometimes there are a lot of uh, classrooms being heavily decorated, which can bombard students with too much visual stimulus and interfere with their memory and their ability to focus. To understand how decorations affect learning, um, researchers Panderada and Rodriguez conducted a research with 64 students between 8 to 12 years old, and they highlighted two aspects of decoration. For the high decoration group, the walls of the room were covered with numerous pictures and objects such as cars, musical instruments, and trees, whereas for the control group's room, the walls are bare. A total of four tests were conducted, two for memory, two for attention. Results show that compared to students in the bare uh, room, students in high decoration room perform worse on all tests. This suggests that too much visual stimulus can be a distraction. The study authors explain that it indicates that students could have difficulty in ignoring visual distractors when these are embedded in the environment. To say that we should make our rooms bare is also not the case here. In 2015, a team of researchers in United Kingdom conducted a research in 153 classrooms, and they found out that uh, most students benefited in a, uh, in a classroom with walls decorated with specific um, and well-planned um, visual aids. The displays in the classroom should be um, designed to provide lively sense to the classroom and it shouldn't be chaotic in feel. 
So what do researchers are saying for us teachers to do? Display student work. They do not only feel a greater sense of responsibility for their learning, but are also more likely to remember the material. But avoid student scores or grades. This can work for high performers, but they can backfire for struggling students leading to feelings of shame. Visual aids like charts, maps, and diagrams are okay, but don't forget to take down ones that are no longer helpful. Outside the English room, we have calendar of events showing activities we enjoyed for the month. After a year, we transfer them to school walls. This reminds students of how enjoyable English lessons are and will make them excited to come to class. We also have um, talking pen. Also, worksheets and sample activities which students will do for each grade level were posted as guide for them um, on what lessons they will study as they move up each grade. Also, every beginning of the term, we usually put up welcome poster at the student's entrance. On stairs, putting alphabet, numbers, days of the week, Months of the year and emotions are good, but having challenge will make it more engaging. And we make the students choose which prize they would like to receive. As a whole, what we put in our school and classroom should be carefully decided and shouldn't be overdone. We should always think of what impact our choice of decorations will have to our students. But aside from physical, students should also be exposed to language use. According to the website report, although Japanese students learn English for more than 10 years, many of them still cannot communicate at a simple daily conversational level. And the Japanese education system is mainly geared towards helping the students to pass written university exams without spending time to use the language for communication purposes. Our program, English Cafe Time, is being done in Ono Elementary School for two years now. Every lunch break, students play games which are deliberately chosen to exploit the language use with the ALTs and other students like this. And to motivate our students to participate, they are given an English Cafe Time Passport where they get nice stamps and cool stickers of their favorite anime or cartoon characters. This activity built rapport between ALTs and students that made for a very effective learning environment. At first, students were a bit hesitant to participate in this program, but as more students come to play with us, we needed to make a schedule and assign a grade level for each day. In line with this, an expert in the field of linguistics, Stephen Krashen, specializing in theories of language acquisition and development, elaborated in his acquisition learning hypothesis that acquisition requires meaningful interaction in the target language a natural communication in which speakers are concentrated not in the form of their utterances, but in the communicative act. Also in his effective filter hypothesis, he claimed that high motivation, self-confidence, low level of anxiety, and extroversion are important for the success in language, in second language acquisition. The said effective factors are common struggles of most of our Japanese students before. English cafe time increased active participation and engagement of the students in using the language. The global test of English communication showed that the speaking ability of our grade six students is at level four 
And the English cafe time served as a scaffold in increasing our students' speaking skills. Another activity that we would like to recommend to you is the English broadcasting time. Perhaps you all know that school broadcasting is an essential part of school education system in Japan. We do English broadcasting every last week of each month, and we have morning, lunch, and afternoon broadcasts. We prepared the script with the help of our JTE, and instead of word-to-word -word translation of their Japanese script, we modified it and made it easier for the students to read and say. Before English Broadcasting Week, we practice reading the script with the students by repeating after the ALT. You can use their morning and lunch break for this. Here's the video of our student doing the English broadcast. This is our EPT, Omashou English Broadcasting Team. You are listening to Kotone, Yuna, and Hinako. Here's another video of our students. What PM now? It's five minutes before going home. Did you enjoy school today? Please return the things you used to. Please take care. And see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> what makes it more challenging are the guessing games, English songs, and English trivia portion, which truly enhance our students' reading, listening, and speaking skills. Not only that, the moment our students ask what and how should they say words in English, they start to realize that they need to write it down. Thus, writing plays a big role as well in broadcasting time. Next term, our plan is to do storytelling portion to make it more exciting and engaging for our students. Overall, it's about reading, speaking, um, writing, and listening. Whether they are presenting or just listening, these vital skills are not only fundamental during broadcasting time, but are essential for real-world skills. Another activity that we do to expose our students to English language is through storytelling. We do this activity during lunch break when it's a snowy or a rainy day. For this activity, we choose um, English picture books that has Japanese version to activate our students' prior knowledge. Here's a picture with our second graders. We're telling them the story, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? We often ask them questions like, what is this animal? What's the color? For our fourth graders, we're telling them the story, a very hungry caterpillar. It's a good practice for them to say the days of the week and fruit. Authors Ellis and Brewster in their book, Tell It Again, the handbook for storytelling for primary English language teachers, they explain that the use of um, stories in uh, teaching and learning English is a foundation for secondary school in terms of le uh, learning basic English uh, language function structures, uh, vocabulary, and language learning skills. They also mentioned that the use of stories can bridge the gap between language study and language use. It also uh, serves as a link for classroom learning and the outside world. When we're uh, reading picture books to our students, we always involve them and initiate reactions by using puppets, changing our voice tone, um, pausing and asking them questions, and making them mimic the sound of animal characters in the story. Here's a picture of our collection of different English picture books that we have in our English room. Um, our fifth and sixth graders can borrow them and read them at home. 
Interactive reading theory explains that the connection the reader made with the text using his prior knowledge or schema, as well as the interaction that he has with the text while reading um, is the key for fluency and coherence. Alison Brewster again explained that the activities that we do during reading and the students do while they are reading is essential for them to create the idea that learning English is fun, creative, and enjoyable. Hence, it makes the anxiety of our students uh, become low. Lastly, we wanted to share with you our strategy in teaching reading to our young learners. We all know that the current English curriculum in Japan is more focused on listening and speaking, paying less attention to reading and writing. But in our school, we try to make our students accustomed to these two other skills to prepare them for the demands of junior high school. Last year's GTEC junior result shows that our sixth grade's reading ability is at level three. Because of that, we thought of an activity to help increase our students' ability. We've been doing reading practice for two terms now, from third grade to sixth grade at Ono Elementary School. For this activity, again, we choose English picture books with Japanese version that our students are already familiar with. Um, psychologists uh, McCormick and Presley in their cognitive strategy research claimed that the activation of schema or prior knowledge of our students um, affects their comprehension, improve their inferences, their attention allocation, and memory of what they have read. Also, Jean Piaget in his reading theory claimed that children between the ages of two to seven, or uh, also known as the pre-operational stage of life, needs repetition for them to grasp the concept of sequence. So rereading the same story to them over and over helps them learn it effectively. Each day we practice one page of the book until we finish it. We use rhythm and music to help our young learners say and remember each word. Oftentimes, our JTE plays the piano as we sing. Georgi Losanov, in his Suggestopedia Learning Theory, claimed that the use of music during reading relaxes students' defenses and opens up their minds to the language. In this activity, we provide our students with a reading practice card. It has the copy of the reading material and the reading progress sheet where parents can sign, stamp, and give comments. This serves as our students' homework and they pass it to us the next day so we can check. Um, Just to let you know that first, five minutes left. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. So, thank you for... Um, at first, our students were struggling, but constant practice with rhythm and music made a drastic change in their reading skill. And as English language teacher in Japan, we constantly strive to create an environment where our Japanese students can be exposed to the language in varying forms. It's not enough, however, for them to be just passive observers of the language they see in the classroom, in the textbook, or on school walls. A language, in, uh, a language reach environment has many different layers, and we believe that the key to them all is student engagement. According to Kono in her Scholastic Teacher's blog, if your goal is to make your school a language reach environment, Student exposure to English language should be meaningful, deliberate, repetitive, and engaging, meaning it directly involves the students as active participants. Also, learning specialist Alicia Disapola in her speech mentioned that when the activity is relevant, our students become learners. Their interests are sparked and their brains ignite. 
So the key here to close the achievement gap is to include our learners in their own learning. We would love to hear what you're doing in your school so we can also learn new um, strategies to improve our activities too. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, what an excellent thorough presentation with lots of photos to help us uh, see, see how to do this in our own classrooms. Um, can I ask everyone to please unmute themselves so we can give a hand to the presenters? <laughs> Thank you. We have about three minutes for questions, so be quick to raise your hand or unmute yourself and, and ask your question. Who'd like to go first? Or you can type your question in the chat if you're feeling shy. But this is a great opportunity to get some real ideas next week in your classrooms. <laughs> oh, oh, Emily McFarlane, you have a question. Hey, thank you for your presentation. It was really good. I'm a, a assistant as well at elementary school, so those are lots of ideas that I'd like to use. I, it's not so much a question, but I was just um, wondering if it's possible to get a copy of your slides if we email you, and which of you should we email for that? We have our email ad available in our profile in doubt. Both of us can do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I really appreciated the, the photos that you shared of your classroom. I've been teaching in elementary schools as well, mm -hmm. and the teachers are very experienced with using the classroom walls. It's good to think of ways we can do that in English as well. Okay, well, if there are no further questions, let me uh, ask you to unmute yourselves again. And let's have another round of applause for a great presentation. I really appreciated your, your, your work. Thank you. Thank you. That's me. Wonderful. Bravo, bravo. Good, Good job. job. Good job. Yay. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I'll stop the recording here. Thanks you everyone for coming.